Kate and I wanted to try something completely new in Oregon. This land has family roots for both of us tied to the eastern and western edges of the state. So we thought it would be meaningful to drive all the way across Oregon from east to west, starting at our favorite border crossing, the deepest river canyon in North America, and ending on the rugged and beautiful Pacific Ocean, crossing right through three massive mountain ranges and one giant desert to get there. We made this route from scratch, and we only had seven days to find out if it was even possible. It would take every ounce of wayfinding, courage, self-belief, sacrifice, and friendship to make it happen. This is our story. This is the Oregon American Overlander route. So what is the Oregon American Overlander route? It's a 700 mile route across Oregon we are creating specifically for four wheeled rigs. It will touch on what I think are Oregon's best features, including Hell's Canyon, the Wallawa Mountains, the Elkhorn Mountains, the Desert, the Cascades, and finally, the Pacific Ocean. But here's the problem, we've never done anything like this before. So we'd have no idea if the route we've been putting together on paper translates into something we can publish publicly for anyone who wants to try it. <laughs> But there's only one way to find out. Well, here's the deal. It's part of the adventure. Number one. Number two. I don't know. We'll figure part of the it adventure. Out. <laughs> Every overlanding trip starts with leaving where you're from to get somewhere else. And Kate and I couldn't wait to get out of the city and into the wilderness. We brought both rigs. I was driving the JKU Finn, and Kate was driving our 392 Finn again. Our base camp was Kate's family cabin in McCall, Idaho, where the rest of our group would be meeting up before launching the next day. The group consisted of our good friends Chris and Elsha, their two kids and niece in two rigs, and Ryan and Sakina and their two kids and dog in one rig and a trip. Trailer. So we had a full house in McCall. So we're here at uh, Kate's family's cabin in McCall, Idaho. And we've got a bunch of people that are going to like, I'm not gonna say descend on us, but like, it's a pretty big group. Tonight, there's not enough room in the cabin because it's not a huge cabin. So let me show you what we're gonna do. We think that this driveway is probably big enough. So we'll have the rigs parked wherever we can park them. And then they're gonna have rooftop tents. So right in here, probably we can get a rooftop tent. And then Ryan and his family are gonna have a trailer, a jump -a jack trailer. So we're gonna try to have maybe his trailer in here. I parked Finn on the side and Finnegan is in the garage. And so hopefully there's enough space for everybody tonight. Before everyone arrived, Kate and I sat around with her parents, Jim and Carla, to talk about the weather. And what we discovered was not good news. Like any minute now, the crew's gonna start arriving. And we've been here for a couple days and we've been watching the weather change. And it's not great news. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's gone from like reasonably cool to cold, to cold and rain, to cold and rain and more rain and thunderstorms. Yeah. So so everyone's uh, gonna arrive and we're gonna have to break the news to them that we've got some serious weather to to talk about. And P.S. People, it's mid June. Yeah. It's late June. What is happening? Usually this is like 80s. Yeah. I was expecting tank top shorts, yeah. like worrying about too much sun. Not happening. Yeah, we year. had like we went to the store to buy extra warm clothes because we're nervous now. Yeah. Because the way we pack. Anyway, so they're gonna get here. We're gonna have to break the news that we've got some decisions to make on the route, on yeah. where we camp, and I'm hopeful that like everyone is okay with some changes, but I guess we'll see. Well, here's the deal. It's part of the adventure. Number one. Number two. I don't know. We'll figure part of the it adventure. Out. <laughs> Number three, we'll it's it part out. of the adventure. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> okay. Welcome to the camera life. Yay! The journey begins. <clears throat> journey begins now that you're here. I trimmed the <laughs> trim the stash just for. Oh my <laughs> God! You did. Ready. Look at that. Hey, dude, you guys made it. We started out with one rig and started with two. <laughs> hey. Hey. You made it. Thank God. God. Hey, you. You ready for an adventure? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As expected, our friends decided we were going come what may. So we tucked in, said goodnight, and got some rest. We would need it. The next morning brought sunshine and warm air. It was really hard to believe the weather reports were gonna be correct. That dry hair, Take this. warm feet, enjoy, enjoy it. <laughs> but everyone got up early, packed up their rigs, said their goodbyes, and got ready to hit the trail. Let's roll out. Don't tell me what to do. You are now in the presence of a king. Let's roll out. Extremely 
definitely appropriate. All right, here we go. We are having a great time. I can already tell this group is just gonna be ready to take what comes on. We know the weather is gonna be a little dicey today. The good news is we're going in into like familiar territory to start this trip. And we're gonna like progressively get into parts of Morgan that we've never been to before. But we're starting in the Hills Canyon area, which we've been to uh, many times before. So that gives me some comfort that, um, you know, should we have to call some audibles, we'll be able to do that. I think that was our turn off. Sir, it was. Okay, you guys, we have now officially hit the route on my Gaia GPS. Set for Buddy. Yeah. And we'll take us up through Bear, Idaho, over to Cooperm, Idaho, down the Klenschmidt grade, across the Snake River, up the other side of Hell's Canyon on Hess Road, and we will see what we find once we get up there in terms of weather. Think of this spot. Perfect. So we're airing down. Kate picked a beautiful spot to air down with these views of the mountains. I feel like right now the trip is actually beginning. So wind is picking up, which makes me think like there really is a storm coming in. I was kind of hoping that that was not the case, but we're gonna get a quick bite. We're gonna air down our tires. All right, Kate, what you making? Oh my gosh. Okay, I've got uh, PBJ for the boy, and I'm doing a ham sandwich for the girl. Why they can't like the same thing is beyond me. We are going to um, try to get to camp as early as we possible so we're not setting up camp in the rain, which I think we're definitely going to have tonight. The forecast is calling for up to a half an inch of rain, which is a lot of rain. So um, I'm going to get on this dirt road and try to get there. Oh. Okay, let the ledge roads begin. This is uh, enough to cause anybody a little pucker, but the road should be in really great shape and it's actually a pretty easy drive as long as you keep your eyes on the road. Well, the road's in pretty good condition. Hopefully the other side is good. And Hell's Canyon turned out to be one of the most beautiful ways I've ever experienced to start an overlanding journey. It's looking really green down here. You guys, this is so incredibly beautiful. Uh, it's just incredible. Guys, that was unbelievable. We just got done driving the Kleinschmidt grade coming down from Kuprum uh, to the Snake River. And wow, was it beautiful. I've never seen it this green. I've never been here when it's this green before. Just gorgeous, the whole thing. At last time we were here, it was like in August or September. And so it was really dry and uh, this time just to see the mountains so green all the way down was just incredible. What a fantastic start to this trip. I'm still a little nervous about the weather. The clouds are really starting to move faster and come in. So right now we're on pavement. We're crossing over the river. There's no way to do that on dirt. So we're going to cross over the river and come back the other side and drive up the other side of Hell's Canyon on Hess Road. So here's hoping that, was just, that that's just as beautiful as the way down. What a way to start this trip. Oh my gosh, that is like, that is one heck of a way to enter into Oregon. Oh, I can see our road. Okay, down one side of hell, up the other. Y'all ready? Let's do it. The road up the other side of Hell's Canyon was in very good shape, good enough for almost any four-wheel drive vehicle. And driving up a mountain, heading towards storm clouds, started to be a theme that would repeat itself throughout this adventure. The storm 
storm clouds are getting darker and darker and they're moving faster and faster. But even though it made things feel a bit more uncertain, it made for a beautiful sky and rich colors all around us. Wow, the Kleinstrad grade is now way below us. That's crazy to think about. So we are officially in Oregon. We are driving up the other side of Hell's Canyon. We drove down one side on the Kleinschmidt grade, crossed the river, and now we're heading up uh, Hell's, the other side of Hell's Canyon, up Hess Road, and it is just so much fun. It's been years since we did this road, and just so much has changed. I'm just reflecting like how different like just things are in our journey of, of overlanding. So all is good and I'm having a blast and I'm just so excited to be here. Well, we just climbed up the side for the most part of uh, Hell's Canyon. We are um, just making our way through kind of the foresty area right before we get to the very top. Um, but the big climb kind of happened and man, it is just spectacular. What an incredible part of the country we live in where we can drive that thing. And it's really not too bad. Like the conditions aren't bad. This road on the way up is a little bit more washed out, a little bit more rocky than the Kleinschmidt grade coming down. Uh, but it's still very drivable. Everyone's in good spirits. You know, we're stopping more than we probably would if we didn't have our kids and all that stuff, but it's like not bad. It's so fun that they get to experience this too. And that someday they'll be able to, you know, think back and around the Thanksgiving table or something, complain about how they were forced to get in the back of these Jeeps and go on these crazy trips up the sides of these mountains and stuff. But, you know, I'm very happy to provide that complaint for them. So we're gonna get up here. It's, the clouds are getting way worse. So we're gonna try to get the awnings deployed and get everything set up before the rain starts um, so that we can have a decent evening this evening and just kind of hunker down and see what happens. Our plan was to get low and find cover. Low to keep the temps reasonable overnight and cover because we knew there was going to be a storm. So we chose a spot in a largely deserted campground that had plenty of space for everyone along the Inaha River. Hey, howdy. So we can do awning to awning with Chris over there. Uh, so I'll back in that way? No, you know what, because you, you want to... I want to come through this way? Okay, you got it. With the impending rainstorm coming, we had the idea to get Finn and Ripley as close as possible and then line up our awnings to create more cover. No one likes setting up camp in the rain, so we all started taking advantage of the dry sky to deploy our tents, set up our kitchens, and prepare for an evening undercover. And we made it just in time before the rain started. We're here at camp, it just started to rain. We've got the awnings deployed kind of like just in time. And Kate and I are just starting to make dinner and we're making a, an ouzo? Is it an ouzo, Kate? An orzo. an orzo. It's called an orzo. I don't know. I guess yeah, uzo. It's not like vodka from like Greek vodka. <laughs> that's where my that's where my head is right now. The cool thing is we have these two tailgates now, so Kate can be cooking over there and I can be chopping onions over here. It works out really well. So um, hopefully we have dinner soon, and we've got plenty of room under the awnings. Put the two awnings together so we can kind of get everyone under here and enjoy a nice dinner together and enjoy the sound of the rain. Hey, what are you what are you thinking about this weather? I mean, I'm so glad we have awnings. <laughs> yeah. And I'm so glad we have a little bit of time before it started. I think we're going to be fine, but it's going to be wet. It's going to be muddy in the morning. Yeah. You know, here we are. It's fine. Oh my goodness, look at this, folks. This is Blantons. This is like some of the best stuff. For those of you who like bourbon, you'll know Blantons is amazing. Chris, this is Awesome, dude. I could not ask for a better bourbon on this trip than Blanton's. Yeah, this is kind of like, it's Father's Day weekend where we're taking this trip, we're starting this trip. And so I saw this and I was like, I knew that Will had been on a vision quest for a for, for Blanton's. And so I saw this and I couldn't buy it. I couldn't not buy it. It definitely has started raining like the forecast said. It's not like a torrential downpour like we were afraid of, but it is wet, so everything is getting wet. I am a little sad for uh, my buddy Ryan over there and Sakina, they have their stuff kind of out, no awning, and I think they're gonna be just fine because they're towing in the back of the trailer anyway and all that stuff should be watertight, but it's no fun seeing your stuff rain down. Back under the awning, it was time to sit down and grab a bite to eat and see what everyone else was making for dinner. What do you think? It's hot. Hot. I mean, I think it's good. I think it's really yeah. good. Something about hot, warm kind of stewy stuff. But it's like cool and 
raining outside is just very comforting. This is really good. I'll show what's happening over here. We are making a uh, pad key mao. Oh, I love pad key mao. Oh, I know you do. Well, Elsha, you constantly take my chair next wait, to Kate. No, wait, no, it's because no. I love Kate. Go, cool. Yeah, go. that's we're, that's we're, we're one in the same that way. Okay, so you got this drunken Thai noodle. Which yeah. It looks amazing. How is it? It's delicious. Uh, then we added a little bit of this Korean spicy barbecue sauce to it on top, just to add a little bit of spice to it, and it's it's hot enough you have to keep eating it but it's delicious but just like that the rain let up and everyone took advantage of the opportunity to get out from under the awnings including the neighborhood deer ryan what kind of garbage are you making for dinner so we're making french dips Ooh. oh mama so we've got some beef look at your au jus. you got a jus, au jus. so fill up the little cuppy cup it's like a little uh it's like a little a dog dish for dog dish <laughs> well it technically is a dog dish so but the wife doesn't know okay so we have this we have a little havarti cheese on there okay. easiest way is just throwing the au jus and warm it up and then throw it on there and dip it in and you're good to go so here we were day one of a new trip on a new route with a lot of uncertainty about what was to come while the kids figured out how to play near the river without going in we tried to figure out how to dodge a forecasted snowstorm the next day we are like right here on the Imnaha river the Imnaha River flows right through here, right? Mm -hmm. That's the Imnaha. So we're going to cut through the Hell's Canyon Wilderness area tomorrow, make our way up to Joseph, and then we're gonna cut across through, right around Baker City, and there's the Elkhorn Mountains right here. It's gonna snow tomorrow, so we can get on the other side of the Elkhorn Mountains here, get to some lower elevation around Phillips Lake, which is right there near the Sumter area. I think we'll have a really nice campsite and we will not get snowed on. With our route spec'd out for tomorrow, it was time to try and relax again before the next round of rain hit. Oh my God. Tell me more. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. You guys, listen that to this. Just look at Holy, that was super natural, bro. So, yeah. Actually, that was natural. That was like... <laughs> As an introvert, I am now <laughs> We had no idea what the next six days would bring as we tried to make a new overlanding route across Oregon. And our wildest imaginations couldn't have predicted what was to come. But none of that mattered in this moment. So, we embraced the rain, focused on the present, got ready for bed, and dreamt of the snowstorm and reroutes to come. We were now deep in the heart of Hell's Canyon. The rainstorm hit in full force overnight and everything at camp was soaked and the clouds were telling the story of more weather to come. I woke up early because I couldn't stop thinking about the day ahead. We had ambitious goals, but with five rigs in the convoy, two of them stocked and one of them towing a trailer, I knew there was a fair chance we'd have to problem solve if the route wasn't in good shape. But what I didn't know was just how much problem solving the next five days would bring. So for now, I gave myself a few moments to enjoy the peace and quiet of camp. We wanted to get an early start to stay ahead of the impending snowstorm. And as I was packing up, I noticed my trasheroo was dripping. So it's never a good thing to see dripping coming down from your trasheroo. Uh, but in this case, I think it's just a wet rug. I immediately went and checked the trash because I've had punctures of the trash before and it is not good when you puncture like a double duty bag or something like that. So I think this is just rainwater draining through. The nice thing about these trasheroos is that they have these drain holes under there. So moisture or liquids can get out, but uh, that's never good to see. Everybody will got a route, we're just gonna follow him. The route I created was supposed to take us through the Hell's Canyon Recreation Area until we hit the town of Joseph, Oregon. Well, the rain has done us a favor with the dust, so that's nice. Totally. This is a beautiful road. It is. The route was in perfect condition. We were making good time and our spirits were high. So high that some of us didn't even mind getting a little mud splashed on them. <laughs> this forest feels old to me. There's something 
something about Hell's Canyon it just feels a little older and wilder than other places I, I go out. Yeah, it does feel old, but the nice thing is it doesn't have that kind of oppressiveness. Yeah, that's a good point. About 20 miles in, we hit our first reroute. Give me one more minute to see if this road goes through. It looks like it does. No, I, um, I'm, I'm chatting with someone. She says, no, it doesn't. You can't get across the bridge. Turns out the person Kate was chatting with was a Forest Service field agent and a fan of the channel. We watched that whole one. Was it just one and, and you went all yeah. the way to, to the Canada. border? Canada. Yeah, yeah. 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 The, uh, These two know, yahoos uh, together. Okay. Yeah. What's your Store. name? I'm sorry. Linda. Linda, it's uh-huh. nice to meet you. Linda. Okay. <laughs> you too. Tape, but... I pull it off oh, every day. Oh, oh, that is just unbelievable, you guys. Just unbelievable. I am totally floored. Well, just don't forget all of us um, when you become a big star. It wasn't just me, dude. She knew everyone. I kind of feel bad for flipping her off when we first saw her. You'll never forget Ryan. For the record, Ryan didn't flip her off. He just has a terrible sense of humor. On my map, this is a named Forest Service road, so unless there's some kind of blockage, I'm hoping that it goes all the way into Joseph. Good. As far as reroutes go, this was an easy one, especially with the help of Linda, who knows these woods like the back of her hand. So far, the weather was holding, even though we had threatening clouds above us. But we felt like luck was on our side, and nothing would go wrong from here on out. Hey, Ryan, what's your car's name? Better than Finn. That one hurt, okay? That one really hurt. We call her BTF for short. Whoa, 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 that's some good looking firewood you got there. Harvest it myself. <laughs> Why don't you have a mojo on out of here? It's my property. I found it in the woods, it's mine. Mine is brown gold. <laughs> well, we were just outside of Joseph, Oregon, um, which is a beautiful little town at the foot of the, of the Wallawa Mountains. And these Wallawa Mountains are just incredible. You know, they call them the mini Swiss Alps, and they truly look like it. Man, what a great day so far through the Hell's Canyon wilderness into Joseph. We have a long, a long way left to go, but we're off to a really good start. So it's just occurring to me, like we're doing the Oregon American Overlander route. Like it's a route no one has ever done. We're talking about coming up here. We're on pavement for just a short little bit of time and then we're going to hit dirt again. And I'm just like, I wonder if this route's going to go. I wonder if this road is going to work. I don't know. Who knows what's ahead? It's uh, it's kind of wild and crazy, but that's totally what this adventure is about. And so I'm really excited to take on this next section of the route. Let's do it. It turned out this next section of the route would put Kate's optimism to the test, as well as mine. I am shifting into four high just for traction. Well, there's some strange sound going on on uh, the 392. What is it? Like, it's almost like something's hitting the metal like your, your, whatever your metal cloak stuff is, stop and pull over. Okay, Kate, I uh, was on his way back to you. I see him now, thanks. Guys, we might have a problem here. All right, well, I think, um, I think I did something bad. So you said you shifted into four wheel drive going like 40 miles an hour. Yep. Which is okay. You should That's be able to I do thought, that. That's why I thought I didn't, I, yeah. I, like, is there, a, is there a range when I shouldn't have done it? I don't think so. I, I just shifted like, down one lever. Yeah. You can't put it in the four low when you're driving like that because you got to go into neutral first. Yeah, and and as soon as I did that, it was fine. And then all of a sudden, I started hearing a strange noise. Yeah. And and so I slowed down. Uh huh. And I put it out of four high. Yeah. I put it back to auto. Yeah. And then I stopped. Yeah. And I just really slow, and the noise is really bad. You can just drive a little bit. Sounds really bad. Something really like something scraping or, you know? Oops. So, yeah, I don't know. It's almost like, it's like a rock scraping or something. I don't know. It could just be that. Don't really know, honestly, what it could be. Chris is gonna come and maybe help listen kind of see what it is. Could it be sounds like, like metal. Could be like a rock got up there inside the skid plate or something. I don't know, but we'll see, it's, doesn't, it's not good. 
That's bad. That's really bad. Yeah. Um, can, you, can you get out of there and look to see something? Close your door, please, Stella. Close your door, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It sounds back, back driver to me. Yeah. It's like a drive shaft. Yeah, are, are we all clear? Okay, well. It sounds like it's over there. It sounds like it's. Uh, yeah, I wonder if you got a rock, rock stuck in the caliper. Yeah, try, try backing up. If there's a rock in it, it might inject it. Okay, I'll try uh, just gradually going forward again. Okay, I think that was it. I think probably what that was was like we're just going fast and kicking up rocks, and a rock got caught in the caliper on the drum or something. And so that is just the worst sound. You saw Chris's reaction. Goes, oh no! I broke his thread. Yeah, I think it's gonna. I mean, it's not good. Look, it, look, it's not. It's not good to have a rock. In your caliper, that's right. not good. Yeah. Like you, it, could, it can do damage, but I think we can keep going for now. Did you go backwards and pop we it? We just, out, yeah. Oh. Chris I, was like, "Have you tried reverse? Like, did you try unplugging it, plugging well, it back in?" I, so I did turn the Jeep off and turned it back yeah, on. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's all those. I mean, it's not a computer. I know. Th that's the appropriate kind of troubleshooting you could do before you like get to a fatalistic like. Yeah. You know the cheap broken. So that's great. Let's I'm let's go keep turn around. Yeah, let's keep going. Okay. Baby, you, you didn't you didn't break my three ninety two. It's just fine. Hallelujah. With one potential heart attack averted, we climbed deeper into the south rim of the Wallawa Wilderness, where there were a few surprises waiting for us. I also just want to remind everyone that I have only ever seen these roads on the map. So honestly, I I, I really don't know what we're doing. We're just finding our way as we go. Pretty beautiful off to the left. This is a beautiful forest. Even though it was getting late and we were way behind schedule, there was one stop I felt like we had to make. Point Prominence Fire Lookout. We're sitting here on this like sheer rock cliff with this massive canyon below and the Wallawas behind us. And I did not think we were gonna get this when we drove up that road. No, I didn't either. Well, when we first got there, there's just trees all around. And so it's sort of like, oh, much to do about nothing kind of thing. And then, wow, I'm so glad we walked out because I actually stopped the kids. I was like, no, I don't wanna, you know, and I'm so <laughs> glad they didn't listen to me this time. Only this one time. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad they uh, pushed us to go a little further. Yeah. Well, this is right on the edge. In fact, I think we're in the wilderness area. So this is a national wilderness area, which means there's no motor vehicles allowed. There's no bikes allowed, only like animals. So like, I think horses are allowed, people are allowed to hike. And I think this is about as close as we can get to it with our yeah. rigs without actually breaking the law or driving in. and. Uh, you know, we're late to camp. Oh. It's gonna be a late it's night. It's snowing, ah. all those things, but I'll never forget yeah. this rock. Worth it, yeah, worth it. It was now 7 p.m. and we still had to find a route through the mountains, but the going started to get tough and time was running out. Cringing every time I hear a branch hit this uh, rig wheel, sorry. We bought it for this. Is that for a little rock crawling? The trail down here is pretty slow going. This has been a fun trail, like just challenging enough, but not like terrifying. This is the kind of trail though, that gets my hackles up a little bit. No one drives this. And so like there could be something down this trail that ruins our day. Well, we all signed up for this. Like, can we like get out of the rig and just talk real fast? We're getting some snow flurries right now. We've had a little powwow. We're talking about what to do. We underestimated how long it was going to take to do this trek for today, which is like kind of par for the course on these trips when these roads are kind of unknown. You don't really know how long it's gonna take. 
So we're thinking of aborting our original plan to get over the Elkhorns. Um, we're gonna continue driving through this part of the Wallawas and maybe cut down and try to get lower elevation so maybe we don't get snowed on tonight. I think if we go from now, it'll be warmer. Yeah. And I think we've got like an hour and a half, yeah. max two hours to camp. Perfect. Okay. We'll stay on this side. Stay on this side. Yeah. Okay. And if there's lots of snow tomorrow, we just don't get to go over the mountain. We'll do it another time. Fair. Save it for another yeah. trip. And it's not far from home. I mean, we could just cannonball it on the yeah. freeway, yep. like over to that area. Okay. It's not bad. Is everybody okay with that plan? You just kind of have to deal the hand that you're dealt and the weather is not at all what it should be in June, in, in like mid-June in Idaho. That's not all we expected. Uh, we got a little bit of snow up here. There's two pretty big drifts. Do you want to hold back there, Will? Yeah, let's hold back. This is one of those things I think that might ruin our day. Just let, let me go look ahead. Well, this trail has gone from fun to concerning to um, maybe not prudent with families and with uh, two rigs that don't have lifts, one towing a trailer. So um, it's, it, you know, it's just really tight. There's downed trees, there's crazy puddles and things. Uh, there's these snow banks. I'm not convinced it's gonna get any better. So I'm gonna turn around and head back and we're gonna figure out what to do next. Probably we're going to, <laughs> I don't know, just abort a little bit and find um, find some place to camp tonight. I, honestly, I don't know. Right, now, What I gotta do now is focus on getting back to the group, making sure everybody's okay, and making sure I actually get back, uh, get my Jeep back okay, because there's plenty of stuff here that could give me flat tires or just ruin my day, so I'm gonna focus on that. So here's our dilemma. We'd put in 30 to 40 miles to get to this point. It was now 7.30 p.m., and the only way to get to lower elevation before the snowstorm was to backtrack. So that's the call we made. Not the way I hoped it would go. But, you know. That that first bank, I'm worried any one of us could get stuck. That's not even the worst I one. I know, that's, that's, what, that's what worries one. me. That's yeah. what worries me. And then there's like this puddle with this tree down in the middle, and I'm pretty sure I took some massive scratches on. This is the, this is the safe. This is I, this is the right call. If the, if it was two o'clock in the afternoon right now, different call. Yeah. Maybe I don't know. You know, if it was bad news. If it was noon, all day. Let's go. Yeah. But with babies, and we got blue sky though. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. So we did one of the things I hate doing. We turned around and headed back down the mountain. Our plan was to connect to another forest road that would take us towards the Grand Oregon, where we might find a campground for the night. Another thing I don't like doing. Hey, the cool thing about coming up this way, you gotta see the tower in that view. East side of the Wallawas is much bigger and much less tame, much more wild than I uh, gave it credit for. This is spectacular. Oh, take me back to the start. Well, we're losing elevation now, which is good. It's warmed up by five degrees. Dude, Elkhorns look like they're getting some nasty precip right now. Oh, yeah. Well, it's like... to a campground because just things kind of have been a little crazy town and the thing that we tried worked out which is just the way it goes it's an adventure so we're headed to this one campground and it just occurred to me I remember and we're like well it's Sunday it's Sunday there'll probably be places open it'll be fine and I was just remembering how on um, a camping trip Will and I and the kids went on we were like it's a Tuesday in late October, there will totally be camping spots available. And of course, we got there and there was none. And then we drove over the top of Steens. And so I'm just hoping we don't have a repeat of that. Here we go. 
We're going Spring Creek. Fox Hill looks closer to me from where we are. Do Fox Hill. So it's called the Mount Emily Recreation Area OHV Park. One open spot so far. They're pretty full. He back there had a sign in the window that said, Beware. This was everything I hate about campgrounds. Full of people, trash, and full of people. With a storm coming on, we made the call not to stay here. Should we start airing up? Yeah, we sure can. As we aired up, the storm fully hit. And with nowhere to stay and kids to feed at 10 p.m., we decided to get a hotel room. Are you guys heading out and uh, grabbing those rooms? We roll out, are we ready? I was gonna say, you guys don't have to wait for us. And he says, that's what a group does. Aw, Em, you're awesome. I don't consider myself to be a fair weather camper. I'm not even convinced where we would get a spot at that other campground. And we would just be wandering around like listlessly at night in a storm. I mean, it is vacation after all. True that, friend. This was the very last thing I wanted to do. It's what I consider to be the antithesis of overlanding. But here we were at the Best Western, and I had to work really hard not to take it personally. Well, this is not how I want it to, tonight to end at all. I didn't want this in the trip at all. <laughs> this is like the opposite of what we uh, set out to do. I am going to just chalk this one up as a loss. It's the first time we've ever done this, and um, hopefully the last, but we're going to chalk it up as a, as a loss. We're going to get back after it tomorrow, and um, we're going to not let this derail the trip. Well, good morning. So this morning we are resetting. We're back at it. We're going to get back on the route. And we're basically, we're in Legrand here. We're going to get tr as close to Baker as we can this morning as early as possible. Get back on the route. And so the plan today is to uh, cross the Elkhorn Mountains and um, come down through a place called Unity, Oregon. Crossing through the forest there on the backside of the Elkhorns and then wind up at a place called Beulah Reservoir. Now, Beulah Reservoir is unknown, never been there. So we're either gonna end at Beulah, or if it's really early and we wanna keep pushing, we might come down through Burns and then push into this place called the Sunstone Collection Area that we've been to before with the kids. Um, the kids might really enjoy that because there's um, Sunstones, which is the, it's the gem of the state of Oregon. Um, and you can find them right under the surface. You can find these little sunstones, and it's really, really neat. So I know that there is camping out there. I know that there is a, actually a camp ground out there, if we wanted to say the campground, that was that would be big enough if it's uh, if it's available for the group to stay with designated fire pits and all that stuff. And so, but that's probably another hundred miles or so. So that would go from a hundred mile day to more like a 200 or 250 mile day. So we're just making some of those decisions, but we're up early. We're showered, we're ready to get back at it and have a great day today. So we were off to Baker City, Oregon. It's a beautiful morning. That cloud, the, the storm system catching the tops of the mountains is pretty spectacular. So we have a big storm here in front of us and uh, it's going to be a, a very interesting day. It should be a short day, but it could be very interesting. Hey, why don't you try using a blinker, Chris? A what? Yeah, why don't you try using a blinker one of these days? Okay, we made it to Baker. We're looking at the mountains and they are covered with clouds, so I have no idea what to expect up there, but could be precept, could be a little bit of snow. I don't, I didn't see any snow, I saw a few peaks as we were driving into the snow, but um, now it's the moment of truth. We're actually gonna get on the trail up there and uh, see what that looks like. Dude, that cloud looks like it is just dumping right now. Oh yeah, it is. It's pretty much like exactly where we're headed. That's what I told the girls and they're like, Looking up, I can see the ridge. It looks like there is a little snow up there on the ridge, um, but it looks like it's pretty spotty. Okay, well, we are headed into the Elkhorns. We're almost there, and there's a massive downpour happening. It looks like a cloud burst of some sort. We don't know if that means it's gonna be like that all the way up, and maybe it's snowing on top. I can kind of see the ridge. It doesn't look like it's snowing up there, and maybe this is just a little cloud burst, and when, once we get beyond it, it'll be clearer, but there's no way to find out. There we go. All right, six miles up and over. Literally driving into the storm and into the fray wheel. I am having all kinds of feelings about that right now. It's a pretty fun road though. Yeah, it's beautiful. This road is everything I love about overlanding. Not driven often, winds up a crazy mountain, and full of unknowns. But today, we were ready for the challenge. We have a tree down on the road, but I think we can squeeze by it. If 
like we're approaching the clouds here. Ooh, I am seeing snow at the tippy top. We are at 7,000 feet. Before long, we get ascended 3,500 feet and we're ready to cross the summit at 7,600 feet in elevation. Hey, Will, is that all passable up there? I think so. I don't know. Let me see. It looks passable. There is one sketch spot because there is some snow on the road. I think we can pass here. I think we would all feel comfortable if we shovel out a little bit of snow because there, there's a washout and we can use traction boards over it. But with it being so wet, I think we'd all probably just feel comfortable if we could get a little bit more into the mountainside. So we got out our shovels and started chipping away at the icy spring snow that was squeezing the road towards a soft washout point. Our plan was to dig enough into the mountain that we wouldn't be putting tires over the washout, but it's a hard dig and it took all three of us working together. The consequences of a mistake here were not good. The fallout to our left was severe, so we took our time to do it right. Okay, explain the system to me. So, full speed, <laughs> full send. Full send. <laughs> Close your eyes and uh, just, just got it. No, so uh, we cut out a little bit of the snow bank here just to give us a little extra width um, there's a washout right here so we dug out some extra width from the snow and then put down some traction boards just to give us a little bit more of a solid um, I guess footing a little bit higher traction footing too so it should be plenty wide enough now so you're yeah you're hugging the snow yeah you can come more the snow that's one through. <laughs> one through. Actually, I think we dug it out just right amount, so we're gonna be able to get through without, uh, and hopefully take out that that washout. So that way it's not an issue. Now this might look like no big deal to some folks, and that's okay. But when you're on the top of a mountain and you run into something like this, it's always better to treat it seriously. So that's what we did. Ryan was our group spotter, making sure we didn't get too far into the snow or too far onto the traction boards. In these situations, sometimes the fear of what might happen can actually cause you to make mistakes. So it's best to just trust your spotter and keep your eyes on the road. Kate was the last to go through in Finnegan, and while she hasn't driven a ton of situations like this, she has done rock crawling in Sedona, Arizona. You're great, babe. So I was pretty confident that she and the 392 would be just fine. All right, so it works. <laughs> yeah, we dug out just barely enough to keep um, keep us far enough away from the um, washout uh, that it wasn't totally scary. Maybe a little bit clenchy. A little bit. Yeah, some of the rigs that have a little bit of a wider track. Um, we're really kissing the side of the snow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, but I mean, like even uh, with some of those wider tires, they were just like barely on the traction boards. I think that was like the weirdest thing for me is all of a sudden, like you can hear the gravel and then all of a sudden you hear the traction board instead. Like that was more of just like the mindset kind of thing. So. Yeah, and of course it's starting to snow again. So yeah, and you up. know, hey, time to clean up. Kids are playing in the snow and Ryan did a great job spotting. So yeah. that was awesome. Thanks Ryan. Really? Man, that was spectacular coming through the gate and just seeing nothing but just like clouds and that valley opening. Man, it was just spectacular. Wow, we timed the weather perfect. So far, the storms were all swirling around us, but nothing had touched our convoy. And as lucky as we all knew we had it, we also knew our luck was about to change. Not only were we now in the middle of a snowstorm, the road had a massive mudslide that had covered and taken out certain sections. I think this next mudslide might be a big deal though. We might need to shovel it out. Well, much to do about nothing. <laughs> Sorry, man. I was <laughs> like, Amateur oh, I'm like, get the shovels! I would slow it down. I would slow it down a little. Speed racer. We're crossing over that mudslide again. There's a washout here. From this angle, the hole looks pretty big. You want somebody to come and spot you? Yeah, I feel like I'm at a very bad angle right now mudslide that we've now crossed twice and I think this is it because it, it comes down into this river down here but it's created some pretty off camber uh, situations so I'm going to try to drive this right here which is looks like a pretty big washout and just see how bad it is and thin before we ask anybody else to go through it so let's see 
So you guys up there can probably step out. We're gonna be here for a few minutes. That must have been like an epic slide if you were to stand here and see that when that actually happened. We weren't trying to convince ourselves that we had an extreme situation on our hands here, but the mudslide had changed the pitch of the angle on the road to make it feel much more off camber. And the drainage had created a few deeper washouts that made it just uncomfortable enough to go slow and keep everyone safe and calm. Nice Are you implying that I like to do things quickly? And then your driver's car is going to come down. Like a pro. He's about to drop in. Do a rig. That's like nothing compared to Sedona for you. I accidentally hit the shifter. Sorry, Chris. I was like, what did I do? I hit the shifter. <laughs> You're just showboat. Well, I didn't mean to. I <laughs> Chris and his new metal cloak suspension and 37 inch tires didn't need any traction boards. And honestly, he didn't need a spotter either, but it's always good practice to get out and spot someone through an obstacle. Yeah, dude, that was great. Yeah, Push was... him through, we had a good plan. It wasn't, this is the kind of obstacle that like, probably be okay, but for like an unlifted rig or a trailer could really be very scary or something mm -hmm. crappy could happen. Yeah, well like, you know, you had, you know, you got 35s on yours and I had 37s and we just kind of rolled through them. I think the 392 could have too. Yeah. But it kind of shows you why having bigger tires makes a big difference. Yeah, and it's also a great reason to bring traction boards. Like good so, traction boards. Yeah, good ones. These are ARB treads and we, well, we have three sets of ARB treads between you, me and Elsha. Yeah. And we could have like triple stacked these things if we needed to get over yeah. the sketchy part. So this this was like super handy. Yeah, they're all the same model yeah. and it works out really well so you can do that. So Okay. Uh, and look, the snow has let up for a second. Yeah. I'm, I think it's going to be smooth sailing from here on out. <laughs> <laughs> so Will was driving over the Elkhorns all you were hoping it would be? Yeah, it was pretty fantastic. The whole thing. Just awesome. With the Elkhorns and the Blues behind us, we arrived at Phillips Lake to start cutting south towards the desert. Well, this road feels much different. Sure does. The mountains behind us were still getting storms, but for now, our skies were clearing up. Looks like we'll be crossing the dam. I'm liking this little bit of sunshine we're getting right now. So we have made it into the forest just on the other side of Phillips Lake um, near oh. Sumter, Oregon and these roads are in great shape. It's nice to be able to make up some time because we were just creeping along when we were crossing the mountains earlier. And so it feels good to, to just like lay some dust down, make up some time, see the beautiful countryside and, and just feel like you're getting somewhere. It feels good. I'm rolling at about 45 miles an hour, just FYI. This is a fun little section right now. Well, I was looking at the map and I, this is super inexact, but I think we've got 40 to 50 miles left. I do see though on the map, if, you, if anybody's looking at the route, you get a lot less squiggly from here on in. So to me, that means we might be able to make time just depending on the condition of the road itself. This part of the route is packed with little green forgotten valleys and classic Oregon forests. But as beautiful as it was, we were glad to be heading to a drier climate. All right, folks, welcome to the desert. <laughs> Feels like all of a sudden we are in it. Feels like we crossed the line and we've officially entered uh, central Oregon. I believe that's Strawberry Mountain up there. I saw it something like 9,500 feet or something. It's really high. Yeah, and it's a wilderness area too, so you can't drive over it. As with regret.
So it looks like in about two and a half miles, we can take a right and like a creek or a river. There's like 20 campsites right up that river. I vote river. Sounds good to me. So happy to be at camp. The camp spot we found was along the little Malheur River and was just about as picturesque as it gets. Log bridges, rocky banks, and the sound of the river all night long. This was much, much better than the best Western from the night before. Good suggestion, dude. We yes. need to just stop. I was like, I was like getting this, like, I'm tired, like my skin is, my skin's starting to hurt because I'm just tired from Flush. driving all day. Yeah. Hey, what do so. you think of a name for, for this setup? Trailer Swift. <laughs> I think this is a this is a new thing. Trailer Swift. Give it a good whacking, babe. That's a warning. It's a warning to me. Be careful. So we're gonna try this double awning thing where we try to like sandwich our awnings together because the forecast is calling for a little more rain tonight, maybe thunderstorms. So if we need to, we won't be able to huddle under like we did last time. But I think we can do it better. I love this thing, it goes so fast. Why does mine look droopy? A bit sad. That's pretty close, you yeah. <laughs> Our awning's lower because our Jeep isn't level. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, we should do that. This is what we've been searching for in Oregon. This is what makes overlanding a passion of ours. Overcoming obstacles in order to find secret treasures that most people never see because they never leave the beaten path. Thank you. you. Awesome. We are at camping. camp. We are finally oh, at camp. camp. <laughs> Last time we had good times was on the Alward Desert. The Alward Desert, look, if you want to have a good time, Here, I feel like I need don't to do bring this. vegetables. <laughs> Just kidding, these are great. <laughs> Cheers! Oh, are you taking a yeah. picture? Are you oh, videoing? Yeah. I'm like, you're, videoing. you're not. No! Look at that grizzly bear strength right there. So we noticed a little bit of trail damage. This is from yesterday. I took a tree uh, when I was uh, up on the mountain before we turned around. I was kind of scouting ahead and there was this like puddle with a tree in it, another tree on the side, and I, I remember hitting it. But I, I didn't look until now to see that this had come off. So the good news is, is there's some of the clips are still in there, so I'm gonna try to just punch it back into place if I can. Get it to go. Maybe not. I don't know, I'm gonna take a closer look at it. There we go. Okay. And this is not the best. <laughs> we'll have to fix this when we get home, for sure. So we have had an accident, which happens when you're camping, especially for long periods of time. We have this really great recipe that Kate's cooking, it's a flank steak. Well, something happened in the bottom of the refrigerator and it leaked. So here's a cool thing about this ice coat, which we haven't had before, um, is that everything in here is in a basket. So nothing else was really affected by the leak, like it's not really on our other food. And I'm gonna clean it out and all I have to do is pop that thing out. There's a drain down there. I can pour some water in it and just wipe it all down. I mean, that's pretty good if you ask me. So this is like a, a nice upgrade for us. Kate, okay, what are you making tonight? I'm making flank steak, but not my normal family style. I didn't get it. I didn't have time to marinate it, and so it needed to be eaten tonight. So it's just a flank steak with Lowry's sauce and some seasoned butter. 
we'll see how it is. And then we've got um, Mexican street corn. Ooh, I love that combo. Ryan, what are you making for dinner? Uh, tonight we have some beef broccoli. So made some rice, just plain rice. Gotta have that. Some beef broccoli and the fresh broccoli. Um, then we have an Asian salad and then we'll do some dressing, little croutons. And uh, if the kids eat all their food, they get a roasted marshmallow. So Dude, it's like a Chinese food. It is, You're, yeah. So, Ooh. yeah, going crazy tonight. <laughs> so good. I can't believe we're camping right now. We have too many choice sauces, like garlic and red, white, and vinegar, and parsley, and I don't know, all the stuff that goes in there. Just so good. And the meat's perfect. I can't wait to go sit by the camp and devour this. This was day three, but it was our first campfire, and it was almost worth the wait. It gave us the chance to debrief and decompress from all the events from the previous three days, and marvel at what an incredible place Oregon is to overland. Okay, well, it's getting late at night. Sun went down, dark, cold. I see them all bundled up. The kids to bed, finally. And the adults get the chance to just kind of like hang out around the fire a little bit and decompress from the day. We're trying to make it across the desert tomorrow, and I hope that we do, but we came up short day one, came up short day two, <laughs> came up short day three, but I can tell you this, we're having a blast. It is a blast, and we're seeing things we've never seen before, and the group is really working together, gelling together to overcome whatever obstacles we have, and I just don't wish I was anywhere else in the world than right here with these people. So. Here's to a really fun day, and here's to whatever comes tomorrow. Morning at camp was the best one yet of the trip, so we decided to take an extra minute or two to enjoy some locally roasted coffee as we sat by the river and thought about the day to come. Today would be another massive push because we had gotten so far off course at the beginning of the trip. That said, we were in good spirits and hopeful about making our way to Beulah Reservoir by lunchtime. Little did we know the navigation hurdles that were waiting for us right around the bend. Already roll. Ripley's rolling. Rolling. Man, I've got the best looking view in my rear view mirror. I feel bad for everybody else who can't see it. I just have Ryan. Yeah, I see a road up here on our left I'm going to take. Wait a minute. Yeah, I think we're back on the main route. My arrow is kind of swerving around the line here. I don't think so, Will. I think your other route is just a little off. Mine, it shows meeting up with another road. My map is showing a road down to my left that's significantly below us. Let's see if this one comes back down. Very far off the beaten path. Like, I don't think anybody's been out here in a long time. So we've, we've uh, kind of descended down into this Central Oregon Desert Ranch Valley with these little pockets of green where creeks run through it and it's just gorgeous. And so I, I had planned this route to um, go a certain direction but we've just called an audible and we're chasing a different road. I think it's all going to connect back to the same point but this is a much prettier drive, a little bit easier drive. Um, and it's just following the creek right now through this valley which is just so fun to you know, come up over a bend and then see a green valley below. And it's no wonder, you know, it's no wonder people settled out here and wanted to have ranches out here and, and stuff like that, just because, you know, it's like a little oasis. It's a little, little teeny, teeny slice of paradise out here in the Central Oregon Desert. The sheer amount of open land that we have out west just staggers my mind. Yeah, this is beautiful. Uh, hey, uh, you guys know the way to um, Beulah Reservoir? What's up? Why, why you gotta be like that? What'd I say? What? What is it? Rude! Well, I don't think anyone's shown on these roads in years. I'm really questioning this. Are you, you're pretty confident? Absolutely not, but uh, let's keep going. But we got uh, ourselves a bona fide water crossing. And so we hit our first major snag of the day, and it wasn't the water crossing. I'm gonna walk it. It's just deep enough. I think that it's worth walking. It gets it's a little deep in the middle and we've got, not everyone has big tires. I don't know why I'm rolling my sleeves up. I'm gonna like, 
<laughs> Roll your pants up. Roll my pants up. <laughs> you know what, I'm not. These are just a little too tight. <laughs> We're just going in, folks. So, it's not too bad. It's gonna make for a fun water crossing, but it's not gonna be dangerous. Cows are super pissed off at you right now. Uh oh, yeah, cows aren't happy. Sorry. Sorry, we're just crossing the road. Oh, oh my god. I see why they're not happy. Well, one of them's happy. Oh my god. With an easy water crossing in front of us, the route was taking us directly to Beulah Reservoir, just as planned. Or so we thought. Do you see what those cows did to each other? <laughs> This is not supposed to be locked, but it is, so. Well, might as well start to just kind of Just trying to figure out how to get out. So, this is a forest road. This forest road. Forest road 16, forest road 15. And it's labeled forest road all the way through. Clearly no one drives it. So, maybe at some point they decided to close it and didn't post it closed. But this is private property here, and you're not supposed to block access to public roads. As far as I know, this is Oregon, so maybe things are a little bit different, but um, it's a locked gate, so we need to figure out how to get out of here. We're kind of in the middle of it. Like, I can't really find any roads on the map that actually connect to get us out without totally backtracking what we've done today. Sorry, so here's my, here's what I'm stressed out about. So. I feel like I may have done a lousy routing job because we're cutting through some private land and I thought these were public access roads, but I could be wrong. They, they could not be public access roads. So what I'm worried is we get to these, we get to these sections that there's locked gates or like we get through a few gates that are open and allow for people to travel through and we get so deep into it and then we hit a locked gate and we get to come all the way back out. So I guess like the question is, do we continue on and risk a locked gate? Or do we go all the way back from where we started today and take a different way around that stays totally in uh, public plan? I think I know what the answer is. Yeah, and it's not the one that we want. <laughs> it's not the one I want. But it's the one that's probably um, the wisest. Safest course yeah. of action. So here we were, backtracking, again. I am so... So sorry. I was incredibly frustrated. This mistake had cost us another half of a day. And after studying the map, I decided there was no way to get to Beulah Reservoir. Our best bet was to drive towards Seneca before heading south at Parish Cabin Campground. This was a tough pill to swallow, but we took it as a setback and kept going. About five miles away from our turnoff. It's the turnoff too, Will. Forest Road 15. Looks like we're coming into some weather. You mean free car wash? More hail. What the hell? Okay, we're back on dirt. Feels good to be back on dirt. Um, it was a beautiful detour, but um, you know, we didn't come here to drive on paved roads. So uh, they, this is a beautiful road. It is just flat graded. This is one of those like pristine Oregon dirt roads and we are making really good time. It feels so good to be making some, some better time and making some traction on the map. Um, and I don't know, we're flying through here. I don't know what our speed is, but it's fast. And so uh, we're working our way down towards Burns. I think Burns is going to be our kind of resupply and gas up point. And then, gosh, it's like 4.40 in the afternoon right now. My plan was to get to Summer Lake, which is like another, I don't know, 200 miles. So we're not going to make Summer Lake. We may not even make the Sunstone camping area um, because we had such a massive detour today. We're all a little sensitive to gas now. We're getting down to our last quarter tanks. I think maybe Elsha still has a half tank left. Um, so we have extra gas though in that 392 has the trail racks. So it's got 
four gallons on one, of gas on one side and uh, four gallons of water on the other. That's been really nice to have. And uh, I've got four gallons on Finn. I've got kind of two on each side on the hinge mounts. So if we need to stop and gas up, we can do that on the trail. And that should be plenty of range to get us into burns. So for now, we're gonna keep pressing this pedal down and laying down the dust. It was now burns or bust for a resupply stop, but out here in Central Oregon, anywhere seems far away from everywhere. I'm still super impressed with like how few people we have seen, even on paved roads, like one motorcycle, that's it. Man, this turned into a hell of a detour. Yeah, but it's been beautiful though. Okay, 30 miles to burn. I'll just pull into a gas station. Okay, we are in the town of Burns. It is, I don't know, five o'clock or sometime in the late afternoon. There are storms swirling all around us. Plan now is to just go get into the BLM land in the desert and set up camp because people are tired. We got kids and like, we can't just make them drive for 12 hours a day because that's no fun for the kids. So we're gonna try to get someplace a little bit earlier tonight, maybe take an easy day tomorrow, kind of relook at the rest of the trip. We're still definitely gonna make it to the coast, I hope. Um, but we have to kind of reevaluate how we're going to get there. But for now, we're heading into the desert. Unfortunately, the storms had caught up with us. And as we raced into the desert, we found ourselves on open ground with massive thunderheads swirling above us. Open ground and rooftop tents are a very, very bad combo for lightning strikes. So Kate checked the radar and was guiding us south to avoid the brunt of the storms. But this meant we needed to leave the route yet again in order to stay safe and out of the severe weather we were running from. We got as far south as possible and found the lowest ground we could to set up camp. All we could do now is hope we were out of the fray. It was now late in the evening and the only thing left to do was to try and stay positive and try to get everything set up before the rain hit. This is where having the right gear really matters when overlanding. The ability to set up and pack away my tent and awning quickly make nights like this one a lot less daunting. Soon enough, the rain clouds around us started closing in. So Kate and I decided to repack our tent, gather up our kids, and sit in the car to wait and see what would happen. So you can kind of see that line of gray out there. That is a rainstorm that is quickly approaching us. There's a, a storm that's coming in. Um, hopefully this will just be something that just passes through for a little bit and then it'll clear up again. But uh, yeah, I'm, I don't know about you, but I'm ready to uh, go into the tent. You know the saying, good things come to those who wait out the storm? Well, that held true here. Hey. It's not too bad. It, I know, it's actually... Uh, yeah, I mean, it looks bad. It's hard to tell if it's going to be bad or not because for a second there, we got those big gusts of wind when the, when the front was kind of moving over. And we can see the, lot, the rain out there still. I, I don't know if it's going to be bad or not, but, you know, we'll hang out here for a bit. When it passes, resume. Have a great evening. Huh? This but is I just got, a precaution. I got the important stuff. There you go. I know. And, oh, wait for it. Oh, there you Chocolate go. That's wine. a smart woman right there. <laughs> it's really nice to have a smart woman as your partner. Kate's decisions not only kept us safe that night in an open field with lightning on its way, she put us in a spot to watch an incredible sunset. The kind you can only get in the central Oregon desert when dodging weather patterns. It was almost worth the hassle. Almost. Good morning. It is a beautiful morning this morning. We have the sun that has come out. Last night we just threaded the needle between this big storm that was all around us and we just lucked out, so that was great. This morning, it's warm. I think it's gonna be up to 75 degrees today, which out here is hot because this is like the central Oregon sunny sky that I was expecting. And so it's a lot of fun to feel the change in weather, to feel things slowly start to warm up because it's been a pretty chilly trip so far. So today we are going to head across this desert. It's, I don't know, 
120 miles. I don't even know how far really because we're going to be zigzagging through roads. So we wound up someplace that I didn't originally plan on. Big surprise. And we're going to try to connect this patchwork of roads to get this direction basically until we hit back, get back to the route. At which point I think we'll have some roads that we can drive pretty fast on and get through the desert and get to the Cascades. So if we just get to the Cascades today, I would consider that to be a big win. And then tomorrow we can drive into the beach and cross the Cascades and get to the ocean. Even if we have to do more paved roads, like we are committed to getting to the ocean because it is like a bucket list thing for me to go camp on the beach or close to the beach. So we're getting there no matter what. So this morning we are just enjoying the warmth, enjoying the sun having a little breakfast, and then we are going to be hauling dust in probably T minus 30 minutes. We're gonna be wheels up and we're gonna be rolling. We had a long, 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 long way to go. And we had to cross the desert to get there, but we were now on the wrong side of the desert. So I tried to explain to the group my plan. All right, but for real though, we're gonna, we're gonna wayfind this morning, and then we're gonna find our ways onto roads that are faster so we can cover more ground today than we have in the past. These roads should be open. They're all named roads or county roads, but this morning will be a total crapshoot. Mm -hmm. We're aiming for places that have multiple roads coming to them, thinking that those roads will exist. So we're gonna kind of do this patchwork of teeny tiny roads until we get to a main road. Cool? Yep. Sounds okay. good. All right. All right. I need more caffeine. High five. <laughs> yes! High fives! <laughs> yes! Yeah! <laughs> Woo! Spring break! We are driving on roads that have not been driven on in years, um, and it's a lot of fun. For the most part, the uh, the ground is soft, so we don't have to go super slow. We're probably going, I don't know, 15 or 20 miles an hour, which isn't too bad in the grand scheme of things. And we're just slowly making our way back to what my original route was, which will put us onto some forest service development roads, as well as uh, some county roads later in the day, so we can probably make up some of this time. But man, it is truly an ocean out here and you feel like just lost in the waves of desert fauna. It's, it's pretty spectacular. Only, only people out here to keep us company are each other and a few cows from time to time. And I'll tell you what, if you want to feel alone, all alone, this is a heck of a place to do it. After spending the entire day weaving through wagon roads, our chances of getting to the Cascades were about as good as mud. Oh, you got a little muddy there. I, got, I remember my grandpa when I was a little girl, he'd always say, you want to go mudslinging? <laughs> yes! We finally made it to a road that we can drive like more than 10 or 20 miles an hour on. I think we can bomb down these. And I know this part of, of the kind of post Heart Mountain desert area pretty well because we've been down here a few times and so I have a route that we've been on a few times that we that this road connects to. So my hope is that we we're like moving now. We can put in some miles. We can get through the wasteland. We can get to the Cascades. It's like getting late in the afternoon, but I still have hope. I, think, I still think we can do it. Let's go. Well, the Cascades would have to wait. We decided to give the kids a break and head to the Sunstone Collection area to give everyone an easy night under clear skies. Give me fun. Make them well. Tonight is a taco night. We're celebrating our victory, <laughs> making it through the Oregon wagon trails and cow roads onto 
regular roads, and we're doing that with tacos tonight. So it's my turn to cook. Honestly, it's nice to have an easy dinner. Because we've had some pretty long days. And I appreciate something that's really easy but also tasty. So that's what I'm doing tonight. Nailed it. How's the taco? I mean, good. I ate the whole thing. Chris was also making tacos, but if you haven't guessed it yet, he's a much better cook than I am. And his carne asada tacos cooked over the Atsi flame grill looked amazing. Soon enough, it was time for a campfire, which also meant it was time to sit back and watch the horizon change. At this point, the group had made dozens of hard decisions together, compromising at every turn. Yet no one seemed resentful or frustrated. We all seemed grateful. <laughs> so we are just sitting here around the campfire and just really grateful for the fact that we can see the entire horizon. The sunset has just been beautiful out here in the sagebrush and with the mountains in the distance. You know, it's hard not to feel grateful for all the mishaps that we've had that have led us to this campfire right now. And I think it's probably, it's almost time for like campfire stories, I think. So we'll, maybe we'll have some of those before we go to bed, but it's uh, turned out to be a spectacular day. As the evening wore on, the adults engaged in a highly intellectual debate on what to do the next day. <laughs> so Chris, you were about to share your, yes. your wisdom. No, I think there was kind of a theme of trying to push for the beach tomorrow like making a concerted yes. effort to get to the beach tomorrow if we get there great if we don't then that's okay too okay by the way you look like richard the third right now <laughs> with your hood on <laughs> really? your beard. Like, you're like richard, richard the yeah. to get a week off to do oregon border to border is like not Pretty easy special, yeah it's special and i want to try to honor that yeah what uh kate said <laughs> and let's be honest too like this whole journey, um, like all the hours of sitting in the car that the kids, you know, are, you know, probably tired of, which I understand. All that is going to melt away when they hit the sand of the coast. Oh, my children know what they're in for. So they're so children, excited. <laughs> they if I try to, okay, we're going to hammer hard, blah, blah. Okay, that we are You're limiting. So we're, we're making such tight parameters the and expectations, close. cutting yeah. it too close, yeah. that any ripple like falls apart. La, 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 la. Here's some a little red else. Do you want some mustard with your reality? <laughs> yeah, Wait, did like you just it. write that? I did. I, I made that song no, just for you. another possibility too, and that is we could just go into downtown Portland and camp there and nobody would even know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Okay. We have a plan. Okay. We're going <laughs> to... Thanks for nothing. We're going to... We're going to get up normal time we're gonna like make a go at the coast tomorrow and we're gonna call the ball at paisley oregon which is right outside of summer lake and if if we think we can make it we'll go for it if not we'll just camp and try to reserve the try to try to reserve the campsite for sunday so maybe we still get two nights on the beach that's the plan for tonight we'll see what happens in the next 30 minutes when we're all just hanging out and coming up with brilliant ideas all right back in at 8 30 in the morning let's see what happens good night there were no new ideas overnight. The sun came up and our plan was the same, but it was tough to get back on the road because we really loved our little desert sunstone camp. Nonetheless, we packed up camp and all did our best to create a little bit of luck to help things go smoothly. Chris, you've got your metal cloak hat on today. It's like a special occasion. Yeah, one of them. You I don't just have one metal cloak hat, I have several. They sent you three of them. Yeah, they did. That's awesome. So, well, it's, a, it's a, gonna be a banner day then. That's your good luck hat. It is, yeah, we're gonna make it to the coast today. That's the plan. One of my kids asked me what day it was today. And I honestly didn't know. <laughs> I don't know what day it is today. How great is that? I don't know what time it is right now. I know it's morning because the sun is kind of, you know, in the sky. But it, I've reached the point in the trip where I'm just in it, just in the trip. I'm not thinking about time as much. I'm not thinking about what day it is. And it feels pretty good to just be like intentionally lost. But today, Make it to the coast. Let's do it. Let's go. All right, let's roll out. From the minute we started rolling, something about this day felt a little different. Is this a comfortable speed? I get to know your name. 
I think you're going a good, good pace, Will. We've already done more miles this morning than we did all day yesterday. Morgan's Desert is big and will swallow you up, but today we were like a speeding bullet train headed for the coast. Hey everybody, I'm Will from Venture to Rome. Thanks for subscribing. I want to tell you about the five things I like. Number one, cool sunglasses. Number two, chapstick. I carry two on every trip. Number three, monster energy drinks. Number four, Jeeps. Number five, my best buddy Chris. He's dreamy. So come join us, summer 2023. It's gonna be epic. Well, after a few days in the Eastern Oregon forests, I was ready for some desert. After a few days in the desert, I'm ready for some trees again. Let's go find some. It's hard to describe the size and scope of Oregon's desert. It's hundreds of miles of dirt, and even when you're speeding through it on aired down tires with a great suspension underneath, it takes a long time to cross. And it's hard to imagine just how different things are when you get to the other side, something we were about to do. Ooh, baby, we're making some time, which is so great. It's like 12.30 and we're just getting uh, to Paisley, Oregon, which sits right at the edge of Summer Lake. Uh, that's gonna be a lunch stop, a refuel stop. Hopefully I, have, I marked them as having gas, so I hope there's actually gas there. Um, and then we're gonna climb up the mountains and get into the Cascades and uh, try our hand at navigating through the quagmire of highways, forest roads, and just people that are in Western Oregon. Um, we have like not seen a soul in like, I don't know, four days or something like that. So, you know, coming back into civilization a little bit right now, which is uh, always a little jarring, but um, these roads have been great. It's been really nice to have a mix of like slow roads, some difficult trails, some obstacles, and then these super fast roads to make up some time. So here's the Paisley. Paisley, Oregon and its population of 250 sit at the edge of Summer Lake and is everything I love about small rural towns. So we just stopped in uh, Paisley, Oregon to gas up and they have a, just a little gas station and they have a little mercantile that's just so awesome. Like so much like authenticity and charm at this place. I love finding these small towns, you know, as we bop in for supplies. It's so much better than bopping into like a big town and box store. You really feel like more when you're supporting the community, but you also get a, a better idea of what, you know, life is like outside of bigger cities and you get to connect with people a little bit better, which is just a ton of fun. So Paisley, Oregon folks, it's a great, great stop. Well, in Paisley, we learned that the route was washed out and closed due to heavy snowfall. So we had to make the toughest decision of the trip to keep building the route or to take the pavement to the beach. We've got three options. One is uh, we can continue on the route that I've already made. One is we go the most direct route possible and just take paved roads all the way there. Two is we take like a hybrid, which is still mostly paved roads, but it kind of cuts through. It kind of connects paved roads with dirt roads and winds all these rivers and things. If we take the most direct route possible, it's five hours. If we take either of the other two options, it's 300 plus miles. And we will stay true to kind of the off-road experience, but we will either get to the beach really late tonight, like roll in at like 9, 10, something like that, or wind up camping on the way I'm kind of interested to hear the wives' takes on this. So I guess the question is like, do we, do we want to just get to the beach? Or do we want to kind of stick to the off-road thing and risk getting there really late or camping along the way? I guess those are the two. Those are those are basic. That's basically the decision point. And what time is it now? Two o'clock, just after two. So we'll be rolling in at seven-ish, probably okay. between seven and eight, probably with stops and things. Okay. I think the thing is, is that like my girls really, really want like a full day at the beach. Like you're asking me at like the worst time because yeah. I hit a wall. Yeah. I'm just like, what I <laughs> want to do? I wanted to go to that campground right down this road and take a nap. <laughs> do you feel like you've had enough off-roading 
experience, yeah. like that it would be fulfilling to like go directly and then we could off road off the beach. And stuff. Yeah, because we're gonna off road that's on the true. beach. Yeah, and that's that's another thing about going um, traveling with kids is you're not just out there for yourself. You're out there with them. I think so. My vote is to go to the beach. All right. Right. Yeah. Now. Just go. Honestly, I think that. Um, we, we got into stuff that chewed up time yeah. and this is this is the stretch like I've been saying we're going to the beach even if we have to drive paved roads so I want to get I, I want to get to the beach I want to get the kids to the beach that's the thing that they're the most excited about mm -hmm. they've never been to the Oregon coast before so th I think that's what we should do we should just we're aired up let's just get there as fast as we can it's still gonna be a long day it's still gonna be a long drive yeah, yeah. We, we've yeah. asked we've asked a lot of our kids yeah, yeah. yeah. So, they've been awesome they've been awesome we didn't we ask them. them I bet if we asked them they'd be like what are you talking about <laughs> go to the beach yeah right don't now. ask them yeah. Yeah. teleport yeah. to the beach uh, alright all right. two three two three two three two three two beach let me be clear, this was not what I wanted to do. But this trip taught me to roll with the punches, so that's what I did, that's what we all did. And even though I prefer dirt, it was still a pretty drive, despite the traffic. So here we are, stopped on the highway, because of who knows what, probably construction down there. Oh, and it's just turned green, so it's time to go. Yes, we're gonna keep going. Now it's starting to feel like Western Oregon. And I feel like we are in, like, timber territory. It's really strange to be driving this road. I haven't driven this road in, like, 20 years. It brings back a ton of memories. Like, what kind of memories? One of my best memories as a kid is going to visit my grandparents. They lived along the Umpqua River on an old logging road. They had a massive garden. I mean, they just grew it all, and I got to ride the tractor and drive the tractor, and I just used to love going to visit them. Sounds like an amazing memory. When I was a little kid, I was pretty sure dinosaurs lived in these woods. Seems like it might just be possible. The route I had planned uh, took us down that road, but we will have to come back and do it. Well, my fuel light just came on, so I'm gonna be cutting it close. Okay, well, we're almost to the beach, but my JK has run out of gas. It was really, really close. We stopped at a gas station, but um, it's close because it's past 7 p.m., which is why it's so nice to have this trail rack set up with uh, four extra gallons of gas. Now, I have gas on my JK on the hinge mounts, but um, every time I shut the door, they kind of like hit the side of the Jeep. So it's nice to have these. That are, these are like super stable. They're over, you know, they're over the tire. So I'm gonna take a couple gallons out of here and put them in ah, the JK. We're about 1.5 miles away from the turnoff to where we're going to be camping tonight. Uh, super excited to see what it is. You know, I, I don't want to get my expectations too high because, you know, you just never know. But I will at the very least be very happy to uh, stop driving today, <laughs> especially stop driving on paved roads and um, set up camp and just hear the sound of the ocean, hopefully. All right, this is it, this is our turn. I'm so excited we get to watch the sun set over the Pacific tonight. They say in overlanding, the destination is not important. It's the journey that matters. But sometimes the destination is important. Sometimes it's what gives the journey context, what makes it worth it, and what inspires you for the next journey. I think we should drive to the beach right now before we miss the sunset. Copy. And in our case, it put everything perfectly into perspective. You're gonna wanna see this, it's incredible. Wow. That is amazing. In the grand scheme of things, right, right. Oh, yeah. 
Back at camp as we were making dinner, making a fire, and I was enjoying sand camping for the first time, I had a chance to reflect on this adventure. We set out to make something new from scratch, and we did, kind of. But we proved to ourselves that the route is there, even if it means we have to go back and fix it before sharing. And it's incredible. Crossing Oregon on back roads from east to west in a single trip showcased this land in a new and overwhelming way. Every day brought new terrain, new obstacles, and new memories that we'll keep forever. Now that we made it to the end of the road, it was clear to me that through every setback, every obstacle, every delay, there was one thing we all had in common, and that was each other. We believed in each other, pulled each other through the roadblocks, shared our triumphs, and shared our frustrations. It was scary, uncomfortable, uncertain, and in some cases, totally unplanned. But it was ours. We did it. We loved it. We won. We beat the couch. We beat complacency. And we beat the crap out of everyday boredom. So I was feeling pretty satisfied about the whole thing. But there was still one thing left I needed to do. I'll take 